Hi Felters and welcome. So today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable cute pug. He came about because I made some dog baubles and I demonstrated how I made the Jack Russell and everyone said they'd like to see how I made the pug head. So I thought instead of just doing a head, I shall do the whole body and then you can adapt uh, the pug head if you just want to do that. So there he is, there's his curly tail and all his body and that's how big he is you can see in relation to my hand so he's really cute really sweet and let's get started so just to let you know um, I took inspiration from this book it's little felted dogs and they've got a little pug in that one and then also the Cindy Lou Thompson book which is amazing about dogs if you take the Chihuahua the body shape is kind of similar so I took a little bit of inspiration from those two books they're listed below um, and I did a book review on them as well so this is just a beige uh, carded wool because I love using my carded wools and then this is a core wool and then this is a black so these are the colors you're going to need and you might need a little bit of brown because I did a, a line down the back and then this is the wire it's one mil craft wire so I cut 40 inches and then I started, I uh, doubled over the end and then I make an arch. I do a whole video on wire armature if you want to see it a whole lot slower, but I don't want this video to go on for too long. So I've sort of done an arch for the back legs, then go along the body. I think it was about four inches along the body, three inches high for the legs, and then do another arch. And then this is the tail. I don't worry too much about doing wire through my heads you can do some wire through your head if you want to. So I just curled the end over, so that's the tail, because the tail does need to have a really good curve in it. And then with the bottom of the toes, I just turn them a bit so they're a bit more paw-like. So take your core wool and start wrapping it round nice and tight, and then start felting it. It doesn't have to be felted really, really well. You just have to start getting it on. If it's spinning a little bit on the wire armature, then wrap it between the front and back legs and that will stop the spinning. So I will speed this up a bit because you just build up and build up. This takes a while and it's a little bit boring for you to watch. So there we go, I've built up the front and the back. And then I'm doing a little few twists around the tops of the legs where they have the thigh muscles and the sort of forearm muscles. So you do a little bit extra there in the core wool. And then I'm going to add a tiny bit on for a sort of small neck. So you can do that in the core wool colour as well before you start adding the beige on top. And then he needed to be fatter. I could tell already that he's going to need to have a bit of a, a tummy. Pugs can get quite rotund. I didn't want my pug to be too overweight, but they can. They definitely have a stocky body. So I built it up a little bit more. And he was five inches in length and about three inches across the body, I think, in the end. So take the colour that you're going to do the top coat with. And we're going to start doing the legs. So I attach it at the top and then I wrap it all the way down nice and thinly. Um, we're going to do this in close up in a second because legs are really hard for people to keep thin. And it is just practice, practice, practice. And you just get a tiny slither and then you wrap that around trying to keep it nice and even. There was a little gap there just at the top, so I redid that one. So let's see this a little bit closer. So get some of the wool, the slither, and attach it. And then I'm trying to smooth it out there so it's not too much wrapping each time. And less is more. Just do one thin layer, keep wrapping it round, and then start to needle felt it in. I do use, um, Normally it's a 36 needle for most of the beginning of my work and then I go to about a 40, especially when I'm trying to attach the wool or, or needle felt the wool around the legs. Um, the finer needle seems to help, but you have to be very careful of the armature. And then I'm just building up the thigh at the top there. So I just attached it, wrapped it round and then back up on itself. We do. This is doing the pore a little bit more because the wire was showing. And it honestly is tiny little bits that I'm using there. And see the wire's still there. It's another tiny little bit. Take it a little bit past it and then needle felt it back into itself. And then I gave the leg a little bit of a backward bend as if it was a hock in a horse. Now we're adding the colour all the way over. 
and this is quite simple just add the color all the way around I'm going to forwards this up because you don't need to see this and I I've sort of attached it quite well and then I go over it towards the end and make it all neat and smooth with a finer needle so this is just getting it on getting the shape making sure you've got enough bulk building up the back legs again because they do have those nice little sort of thigh joints and gave him a little bit of a, a buttock over the back and then what you do on one side try and do on the other side before you forget and always look at them from the top and from the sides and from the back to see if it's equal and then this is the tail so I've just added it's like the leg I just added a thin layer so I attached it at the base wrapped it round and then we're going to do something else with the tail later on to make it a little bit because um, they have sort of quite fluffy hairy tails so that's the tail and that's how he's going to go he's going to be curled over in, in uh, when we finish so again just building up the leg again it wasn't quite enough so I've built it all round and then I put another bit on top I think I'll show you up close the difference so you put a bit more on the top there trying to blend it in it's almost turning into like what you do with horses so that's done not done so you can see the difference it was very quick but you could see it so build it up slowly I'm gonna say he probably took me a good five hours in total I think but obviously I don't do five hours solid I sort of uh, separate it up so that's the body and I'm mostly happy with it so we're going to make a ball for the head and it literally is a ball shape and then we're going to add them the nostrils and the muzzle on after so they've got quite sort of upright heads and just keep trying it on the body and seeing if it looks like it's the right size in the end I had to add a bit more onto the top of the head it didn't it wasn't quite big enough so even once I'd done the head and started putting the the muzzle on I could still add over the top of it to make it a little bit bigger so this is how we're going to do the muzzle or the nose area so I take some black and I fold it under itself and I turn it into a sort of um, a lumpy triangle shape so this is the first one so it goes on the lower half of the head with a flat part of the triangle at the bottom I will show you see there you go a little bit more with the um, other dog head that I've got the bauble that I did so that's the first triangle to make up and that's the bottom of the mouth and then we're going to have two longer bits that go either side of that sort of make up the the bits of the mouth that hang over so if you take some black and make a little tube I roll it between my hands a lot that really helps speed things up and then turn the ends in and then needle felt you don't have to needle felt. it doesn't have to be solid um, because you're going to needle felt it onto the face anyway a little bit more but it has to sort of have an oblong shape and then you put one either side of the triangle so that's one side done and then do the other and in between the two we're going to do a little ball which will finish it off so we'll have a little close look so that's either side of the triangle there and then at the top bit get a little bit of black roll it up and it's going to be sort of the top part of the nose and I don't know why it all works but it does it does look like his mouth so there we go pop that at the top and it looks like a little mouth oh that was a bit quick I will show you again in a minute so this is me adding some more onto the top of the head because once you put the eyes there so there you go once you put the eyes there it didn't look like I had enough so I, I um, added some more on took a little bit of a while there we go needle felted it down and now we're going to work out where the eyes are oh no we're going to do the little um, Pugs have lots of rolls, so we do a little roll above the nose. So if you take the beige colour and we're going to do a nice long tube of it and it's going to go all the way around the top of the nose, just like that. And then we'll put a thin layer of black over the top to give the appearance of the sort of shading 
um, and the colours that you can get with all the rolls that these dogs have. You can do more rolls than this. You can do more wrinkles. I do a few lines on the top of the head towards the end. But for me, this is enough for what I wanted to do. So you put that all over the top of the nose. There we go. And then I'm going to put the eyes in. So they're eight mil size eyes and they've got the wire on the back, which I find the easiest to get in. So mark where they're gonna be. Take um, the owl tool is fantastic. It's all these tools that I use, by the way, are listed down below. I've got US and UK links on Amazon. So do have a look if you are interested in any of them. So put the eyes in, check you're happy. And then take them out, put the owl back in, get the glue. The owl back in there keeps the hole open, which is good because sometimes the hole can close up a bit and you go to stick it in and the glue goes everywhere. So there's the eyes. Now we are going to do the detail around the eyes and the detail on top of the nose. So take a little bit of black. It's an, a, a nice sort of thin piece of black so you can see through it and just gently put that over the fold that you did above the nose. Um, and that gives it a sort of look of well, if you look at pugs, you can see they've got loads of folds and they look quite dark. So without having to do all the folds, this works quite well. And then we're going to put some black around the eye. And I do this with a lot of my animals, but I have to say, you don't have to use a small piece with the pug. You can use quite a big piece and just circle it around and it softens the eye. And then do the other one. And then we're going to do... Um, two sort of rolls around the outside of the eye as well. Oh, there was a little bit more black. There was a gap between the eye and the bottom there. So I put a bit of black there. Sorry about the sun. The sun sh It's good when the sun shines, but it's a little bit annoying. Um, so take a roll of the beige and then turn the ends in and needle felt it a bit. And this is gonna go around, around the outside of the eye to give the eye a little bit of prominence, a little bit of definition. So start at one end, attach it and then circle it around the eye is the easiest way of doing it. And then just gently felt it, you don't have to felt it in loads because if you felt it too much it will disappear backwards and then do the other eye. And there we go, look, beginning to really look like pug eyes. We're going to do some black, see the pointy bits above the eyes just there and then in the middle. So you can build up the black around the eyes um, as much as you like and you can put the pointy bits wherever you want it to be, pointing to the outside, to the inside. So I did them just going up a bit. And you just take a tiny bit of black and sort of in a little arrow upwards, a little point upwards. And then I did a black over the top of the nose just to give that bit definition before I did the tiny bit in the middle pointing up and that represents another crease in the pug's head. It doesn't have to be huge, just a little pointy bit. There we go. And here we are with the legs. I realised looking at the legs I needed to attach more and you can see that um, what with the head there as well, they were looking too thin. So I just went round every leg and attached a bit more. And so now we're attaching the head. So hold it where you want it to be and then start needle felting through the join. And I'm quite rough with it. Really hold it down. If you want its head to be tilted, hold it in that position. And then just keep needle felting all the way around the head to help make it secure. And then get, um, I call it the scarf. So get some of the beige color and then wrap it all the way around the head and then start needle felting that. You have to do quite a lot of felting to make sure the head's really, really secure. And this works brilliantly. Um, like I said, if you wanted to put wire in through the head, that's absolutely fine. But sometimes I just find it easier not to. And then I put a little bit of white under his tummy, but you can barely see it. <laughs> so, um, but it is there. And then I take a little bit of black and I, I put it along the dorsal, along the top of the pug. You, you can take a brown. I, I think it does look good. So this is the tail now. So take some of the white core 
and needle felt through the middle and then just trim it off so through the middle onto the tail and then just trim it off and it gives a brush like effect and I worked my way up the tail I found that to be easier you can start at the tip and work backwards it's completely up to you and there we go through the middle of the piece and that secures it and then you can trim it off and then the last bit I had to do a little one at the top and their tails are slightly bushy so that's how you do the tail so with the ears we want them in a triangle shape and I just folded over two bits to get the point um, and then I start needle felting it through don't forget to turn your um, pieces over when they're on the mat when you're doing flat pieces because they get stuck to the mat so turn them over turn them over keep felting and then to do the edges, I like to put things between two cards, hold it really tight, and then needle felt, and you get a lovely edge. I do this a lot in my other videos, so if you do watch me, you'll know this trick. And I just had to do the other ear as well, because I hadn't done that one. And then the ears you're gonna position wherever you think they should go. If you think they should be a bit higher than mine, that's absolutely fine. Um, and so I leave a fluffy bit at the back of the ears so that I can attach it with that. So check them out, see where they're gonna go. And then I will have them pointing upwards, attach all the fluffy bits, and that will keep them attached nice and strong. And then fold it over and then needle felt it down a little bit. So I'm still attaching underneath here, checking that I'm happy with it. And then once I fold it back down, I needle felt a couple of times to keep the ear in position. And then do the other ear, check you're happy with it, and to be honest, that is it. We're practically all done. So check that they're level, and then needle felt it down. And that's how you do a pug. So I hope that's helped. I hope you've enjoyed it. I think I'm faffing around now. I think I did a couple of lines across the top to sort of represent <laughs> wrinkles and just checking that everything was needle felted in nice and tight. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Here he is. Everything I've mentioned with all the tools is listed below. Um, I've still got lots more videos to go and happy felting and see you soon.